Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Jonathan. And we're Creative for Learning. We got love between us today. We do. We got love. <laughs> <laughs> today we're going to talk about how to survive those summer months when you don't get a teaching paycheck. lots of margaritas with your friends, then August rolls around and you're at Target trying to buy three shopping carts full of things, and you're worried if you have enough left in the accounts to survive the rest of summer. Sound familiar? Three shopping carts full of teaching supplies. Of teaching supplies. You know, those sales. Yeah, the, do the dots, the dollar aisles. <laughs> and, and their school supplies. It's true, you need them. Um, because many of us and many of you have that one or even two months where you don't get a paycheck in the summer, uh, we wanted to talk about some strategies to get you through those summer months to make sure that you still have money. Yeah, those could be so frustrating. I, my first teaching job, I got paid on 10 months. And so for two months of the year, I didn't get a teaching paycheck. Mm -hmm. So I either had the choice of pick up another job in the summer that could fill in those two or somehow manage that extra two months. Then on my last teaching job, I got paid for 11 months of the year and then they changed it to 10 months of the year and then back to 11. Like, and so I don't know if many of you, are, I'm sure lots of you are on this same struggle because districts feel like they can, well they can't, they can save money by not running payroll for a month or two of the year. And so then we have to figure out what to do with their money. If we're not careful, right, whatever the case, um, then, then we could run out of money. And maybe you're lucky and you get 12 paychecks a year, then just happy. Yeah, good job for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but whatever the case, we want to talk about strategies for saving for those situations. So, for 10 and 11 months, if you're not careful, you can hit those empty months where you're not getting a paycheck and things will just kind of dry up if you haven't planned. And then there's like those two to three weeks after you've started school <laughs> where worst. you're like waiting for your I paycheck. I need a paycheck! I'm working for free. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm eating top ramen. Yeah. Um, so here's a strategy. Um, I'm looking down to make sure I get the numbers right. Take your total annual paycheck, so which in North Carolina is 47783 That's the average. A whopping 10000 less than the national average. Mm -mm. 42nd in the nation. Anyways, only eight states get paid less, so then there's eight states that are getting paid less. Yeah, so um, wherever you're at on that scale, this is it's tricky no matter what, right? But yeah. Um, North Carolinans, we feel you. We feel you. feel you. So we've got to really make this work. So dig at your last paycheck sub and see what it is that you are getting paid each month and what your what your take home is. You want to do? Yeah. So that'll be after health insurance, taxes. after taxes, after your disability insurance, whatever whatever's already being taken out of your paycheck. You don't want to count that because you really never see that. So don't even count that mm -hmm. as part of your money. Whatever you're taking home each month, this is where we got to do the math. So stay with us. It's tricky. But if you do this, those summer months don't have to feel horrible. So let's do take 10 months of take home, right? In North Carolina, if you get paid 47783 that means you take home about 36000 give or take, depending on what kind of deductions you have. Uh, so let's take $36,000 annual take home. Monthly, on 10 months, that's $3,600 a month, right? And so you've got to divide that by, well, you've got to multiply that times 10. That's how you would figure out your 36000 right? Because you're taking your take home on your pay stub. Yours may be a different number than 3,600, right? So take that take home, multiply it times 10, because that's how many months you get paid, then divide it by 12, and that's how much you need to live on each month so you don't run out of money, which in our example would be $3,000, right? 36,000 divided by 12, $3,000. So really, your take home that you should live on and budget on is 3,000 a month, each not, month. yeah, each month, not 3,600. If you do 3,600 or 3,300, anything else, you will run out of money in those summer two months. You have to do the divided by 12. See, they're not doing the work for you, so you have to do this work. Divided by 12, 3,000 a month, which means you've got to take that extra 600 and put it in a fund and don't spend it 
Otherwise, summer will suck, mm -hmm. right? You have to save it. And, and right, 6,000 times 10 months is, or 600 times 10 months is 6,000, which is two months of 3,000. And there you go, you got your two months. If you're lucky like us, in back when we were in California, there was a credit union yeah. that was specifically for teachers, and they had a summer saver plan where they would automatically take out the money. However much you told them. With, yeah, but they would automatically take it out when, if you used automatic bill, no, not automatic bill pay, but if it got deposited, direct deposit, direct that's deposit, the word. There you go. If they direct deposit it to your bank account, they would just take it out and put it in your summer savings. Yeah, and you'd actually get 3% instead of the meager, like, half a percent that mm -hmm. your normal banks would so get. So there's another so, benefit. Yeah, so we did the 10 months, 11 months, very similar process. Look at your take-home amount. For our example, to be $3,272 times 11 months, right? Gets us 36,000 divided by 12, gets us our 3,000 again, right? And so that means 3,000, 3,272, that means you have to save $272 every month times 11 months, gets you that extra month. If you don't do that, you don't have that extra month, right? And you 12 month people, just don't overspend. <laughs> you should be fine. Unless you're like us and we like to travel. So, let's say we want to. Can you travel on a teacher budget? We were. We, able did. To. we my, did. This is this wasn't in our script, but my first four years of teaching, I was at a private school. She was in school. So my first year teaching, I was in California making twenty-six thousand dollars a year. <laughs> we came home and, and on our first Christmas, we went to Second. Second Christmas. We went or second Christmas break we went to Europe. And we came back, and what did the teacher say? Oh, would you throw it on the credit cards? And we said, no, we paid cash. And they looked at us like we were crazy. And we'd just been doing this, and we paid cash on a 20, I guess that year was like $27,000 a year. So if we can take a trip to Europe, Germany and Italy, on a $27,000 salary, you guys and all of us can do what we want as long as we take control of our money. So how do we do this with travel? So if you want to say go on a six thousand dollar european trip um you need to make sure that you're saving six thousand dollars on top of what it is that you are saving each month so if you are getting paid on a 10 month schedule you would take the six thousand dollars divide it by 10 and that means six hundred dollars a month that you need to save so that you can Go on your trip so then you have to let's say North Carolina with the our example you take the three thousand dollars subtract six hundred dollars so you've got to live on twenty four hundred dollars a month or two thousand four hundred dollars yep. a month and that would cover you for those two summer months yep. and cover a six thousand dollar trip during yes. the summer yep hey and then if you're on the 11 month schedule you would take the six thousand dollars Divided by 11, and that's $545 a month. And so you would just subtract that from the 3000 and make sure that you live on the number. And there you go. then you can go to your... Why does it have to be so hard? Answer, because it is. It's money. <laughs> I mean, we just have to take control of our money or our money takes control of us. So sure, we'd love the districts to give us 12 paychecks, but they don't. So luckily, we're big boys and girls. And we can do this. We really can. Right? We hope this helps get you and your mind thinking about how to get through those uh, summer months, take charge of your money, and survive and still be able to relax during your summertime. Yeah, uh, we welcome your ideas too because we're a community and we've got lots to learn from each other. So, conversation of the day. We need your we need your feedback here. Some of you out there, you lurkers, you've been watching the show and we love you, but we need your feedback. We need your conversation. So, conversation for the day. What tips, tricks, and strategies do you have to make your money last through the summer months? Keep being awesome.